Hey, Dave, uh, Kelvin Washington, Sportsnet LA. Um, Julio obviously was spectacular against this ball club, uh, the Braves. Last time out in the NLCS, he was, uh, again, just uh, doing amazing things. Now, last out against the Giants, not so great. Did you see anything mechanically then that you thought maybe was off, that he's kind of right at the ship and you look uh, forward to him tonight? Um, I, I don't, I can't really speak to anything in particular with the, um, mechanics in, in his last start. I think with Julio, he's had some really good ones and he's had some not so good ones. Um, the stuff is always there. And I think to your point about the mechanics, that's where the, the command starts to kind of show some inconsistencies. Um, but when he's good with the fastball command, the life to it, um, that slurve that he's gotten the change up, you know, he's as good as anybody in the game. Um, so this team, a lot of the same guys that we know, certain guys um, that we don't, but still a really good ball club. And uh, this guy tonight, um, Anderson's got a good arm, good young pitcher. So it's going to be a tight game, two good young pitchers. Um, yeah, Julio had a lot of success against these guys last year as far as kind of this rematch with the postseason. So it'll be a fun series. For sure. Uh, let me let me ask you this. Um you know, I know that you like uh, all sorts of sports, including uh, basketball. The Lakers lose, and they don't lose their chance of repeating. Uh, you yourself having won a World Series title, uh, the Lakers didn't get a chance to repeat. It's very difficult. Do you use any motivation about that at, at any point throughout the season to continue to remind this club what it takes to repeat and saying, you know, it's not easy, it's not a given? Well, I, I, we talked about a little bit early uh, in spring as far as there hasn't been a team to repeat since the Yankees in 2000. And so that's a long time. Um, so um, obviously hard to do. And now you're talking about as close to home as us with the Lakers and we're pretty tied in with the Lakers. And so obviously for those guys to fall short, uh, understanding that everyone's gunning for you. So we've already sensed that this year, but it's something that I don't feel I need to address with our club specifically. Um, I think we're all pretty mindful of, you know, what it takes to, to be good every day to win a baseball game and understanding that we're a target and, you know, we've earned that and you've got to embrace that kind of bullseye on you. Thank you. Yeah. Question from Dave Asset. Bye, Dave. Hey, Dave, just curious what the reports were from Tony Gonsolin and Bruce Star Gradrall and what the next step is for both of those pitchers. So Bruce Dar, they both threw well. Tony um, is is here. Just I just spoke with him. He feels good. Uh, was a little kind of had a little stomach thing going on yesterday, but got through it, got built up. So uh He'll be starting, uh, what is, I think it's uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. So he'll have an extra day um, from his from yesterday's start. And Bruce R was good. So he was good. And uh, I'm not sure when his next outing will be, though. Dave, um, I know you had felt very confident that Mookie was going to change his season very shortly here. Did it come a little sooner than you expected? considering what he did in that St. Louis series? Um, not, not really. You know, I, I just felt that he was on his way. And I think I did reference once we get to the road trip and I, and I didn't know, uh, you know, what type of series he would have against the, the Cardinals. Um, but so I just felt that his work has been good um, with the hitting guys. Uh, he's in a great space and he was just on the come. And uh, so for me to miss it by a couple of days, I think that was a good miss by me. <laughs> I know everybody's asked about the effect Albert's had on your younger players, but what do you think Albert does for a guy like Mookie who's accomplished a lot, but still, obviously there's some motivation there. A, a ton. I, I don't, there's only a very small percentage of players that have signed deals like Albert has where Clayton or Trout or Mookie. So you can't really, so that's a small group of people that you can potentially understand can understand what you're going through and expectations and all this kind of stuff so for him specifically I know that they've talked and I don't really need to know the details but I do think that having someone that's kind of lived through it and been successful on his way to the hall of fame has been very helpful um, as a sounding board certainly for Mookie thanks Dave yeah next question from Rowan Kavner go ahead Rowan Hey, Dave, you've talked about the work, you know, Julio's done between starts that's kind of, you know, helped him 
grow a little bit. And I'm just kind of curious, you know, one of those things seems to be that when he does have a bad start, he's able to kind of shake it off and, and bounce back the next time. Is that just a better understanding of what he did, what he needs to do kind of start to start where he needs to improve? Or what do you think's kind of gone into that part of it? I, I think Julio, like most great players are hard on themselves. Um, but I think the separator is he doesn't let uh, recency good or bad affect the next outing and that was even when he was in the pen you know that's as a starter and so that just maturity he's always had that um i think that now with most starters if the slider's not working well the fastball command you don't feel good with your delivery you take that into your uh side session to take it into the next day so into the next start so that along with kind of trying to figure out what he's going to need to do to be ready to, to attack the atlanta braves all that kind of lends itself to that side. So um, I have no doubt that he's going to, you know, pitch well tonight. Thank you. Hey, Dave, what's, uh, what's Corey going to do here this weekend? Any, any progression there? Yeah, um, the, the progression is basically he's going to, he'll be in the cage, I think, taking one-handed swings. I don't think he's swinging. I know he's not swinging off, uh, off an arm yet. Um, he'll be working with his body, with uh, Brandon McDaniel, uh, Travis on kind of the core, the conditioning stuff, running bases, uh, taking grounders. Uh, he's been playing catch, extending it out, think, I think out to 90 feet, maybe to 120. So just keeping his arm moving. So the progression each day has gotten a whole lot better. And, and for us to have him around is a positive. When do you think you'll be able to take full swings, throw the ball and all that stuff? You know, I just right now, I don't know, and I just don't want to guess. And then with uh, Julio, do you think um, maybe that game seven down last year was sort of a coming out party for him? Do you think that was sort of a turning point in his career? I think so. Um, what did he go two, three innings uh, to finish out game seven in uh, against the, in the NLCS? Uh, and then backed it up in the World Series. I, I certainly think that that was certainly, a, I wouldn't say a turning point, but a defining moment for him. And um, it's always obviously been in there. And he's pitched in a lot of big gauge for us in the past. But yeah, to kind of see it through in, in a game seven, pretty special. Thank you, Dave. Yeah.